Nebraska's trusted news source. This is Channel 8 News at 5. 90% of our graduates are employed in the state of Nebraska. So what an amazing investment that is for our industries and our communities. Coming up tonight, Southeast Community College is raising money for an expansion for an industry in high demand. Plus, hospitals are reporting an increase in violence within their walls. But first tonight, tragedy in Ames, Iowa. A gunman killed two women and then himself. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. The shootings happened last night outside an Ames church, which is about 30 miles north of Des Moines. Tonight, we're learning more about the victims, the gunman, and what led up to the fatal shootings. Two college students were shot to death Thursday night in a church parking lot in Ames before the shooter fatally turned his gun on himself. Officials say the shooting at the Cornerstone Church was the result of a domestic situation between the shooter, a 33-year-old man from the city of Boone, Iowa, and one of the women. The uh, suspect pulled up in his pickup, got out, and uh, then the chaos began. He went uh, right into action when he got there from all indications. He was there for uh, a specific purpose, which he accomplished. Both women, ages 21 and 22, were students at Iowa State University. The shooter used a 9mm handgun. He had been arrested May 31st on charges of third-degree harassment and impersonating a public official, all related to his recent breakup with one of the victims. Very hard to comprehend what he just witnessed of, of the actual shooting there and, um, and tried to resuscitate the one girl that, um, from what he said, the gunman got out and, and uh, he witnessed him get out of the car and, and shoot. Uh, this is third hand just coming, but he was the eyewitness, I guess, and, and watched that uh, happen and, and shoot another girl as she was walking away and then shot himself. And he's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just hard to comprehend. The shooting happened during the first summer night of a youth Bible study program. About 80 high school and college students were in the church auditorium. The sheriff says the shooter made no apparent effort to go into the church and appears to have acted alone. And officials say in the shooter's vehicle, they found more 9mm ammunition that he bought an hour before the shooting. Uh, again, Ames is uh, about 30 miles north of Des Moines. Now to the multiple mass shootings in this country and calls for gun control. Many Americans taking to the streets today for National Gun Violence Awareness Day. As funerals continue for the 21 victims in the Uvalde t school massacre, President Biden urging Congress to do something as some states take action on their own. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Calls for gun control are growing louder across the country following 233 mass shootings this year so far. Keep our school safe! Students staging a walkout in Maryland. It's going to be a continued occurrence unless we make an effort to change that. In Milwaukee, people rallying. National Gun Violence Awareness Day taking center stage as the country copes with consecutive mass shootings in Buffalo, Uvalde, and Tulsa. I am angry that we keep having to hold these gun violence awareness days because not enough people will recognize the public health crisis that gun violence has become. In a primetime address Thursday night, the president also urging Congress to act, calling for more gun restrictions, including red flag laws and the banning of assault weapons. I respect the culture and the tradition and the concerns of lawful gun owners. At the same time, the Second Amendment, like all other rights, is not absolute. Bipartisan talks continue on Capitol Hill on new gun proposals, though many Republicans oppose restricting access to guns. I think red flag laws uh, leaves a, a, an interpretation to a court that may not be friendly to the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, some states are tackling guns on their own, like New York, where the governor is set to sign a sweeping package of new laws which will criminalize the threat of attacks, require licenses to purchase assault rifles, and raise the minimum age to 21 to buy one. What we want to do is disrupt a culture that has created a horrific and scary present and future. A young student who survived the Uvalde massacre by playing dead in her classroom will testify before the House Oversight Committee along with victims' families and gun control advocates as the House takes up a vote on gun control measures approved by the Judiciary Committee this week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 
The American Hospital Association recognizes today as National Day of Awareness to end violence in hospitals. Nebraska healthcare workers are focusing on ways they can cut down on violence, an issue that has seen an increase since the pandemic. Violence against healthcare workers cannot be tolerated, and our staff should not have to accept this as part of the job. None of us signed up, signed up for this when we went into healthcare. During the midst of the pandemic, a national study showed that 44% of nurses experienced physical violence and 68% experienced verbal abuse. The uh, Nebraska Hospital Association says patients and visitors can help lessen the violence by following the processes put in place to keep everyone safe, as well as showing compassion to healthcare workers who just want to help patients. Other health news now, Lincoln's survival rate for cardiac arrest continues to improve. And the mayor says it's thanks to a whole host of people. Because of the incredible response of our you know, first responders and our paramedics, because of the bystanders in Lincoln who respond with their CPR training, we have you know, the Pulse Point app, a lot of people in Lincoln are, are standing by ready to help if they're notified. Uh, because our hospitals take such good care of the patients upon arrival, We've got a great team of folks, along with our dispatchers, who are, take those initial calls that really help create this web of support. Lincoln's survival rate for these emergencies is uh, increased from just under 17% in 2020 to over 20% last year. And get this, the national average is only 9.1%. Today, congressional candidate Patty Panzing Brooks was endorsed by nearly 60 bipartisan Nebraska elected and formally elected officials. If elected, Panzing Brooks would be the first ever congresswoman to serve that district. She was proud to announce support from independents, Democrats, and Republicans. Now, when it comes to gun control, she says she is a supporter of the Second Amendment. I don't hunt, but I have a lot of family members that do hunt, and I support that. I'm the beneficiary of the jerky that they make, but, uh, you know, that's not what I do. But I also um, am in favor of universal background checks and making sure that uh, people get their permits. Many of her supporters say she is a bridge between parties. The special election is just weeks away. On June 28th, she is going up against Republican candidate Mike Flood. Southeast Community College here in Lincoln is fundraising for a new project they hope will raise enrollment numbers by 15%. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez tells us what this expansion project will entail. Ariana? Yes, Southeast Community College currently offers welding classes, but they tell me they have such a high demand for these classes that they're turning students and business partners away because they just don't have the room. They're planning to build a new welding education department, which will double the number of work bays and hopefully grow enrollment and partnerships with companies in the community. They're estimating this project will be around $30 million to complete and are hoping to break ground in less than a year. We are one of two testing, uh, accredited testing facilities in the state of Nebraska, and we're actually the largest. And so to be able to provide that um, service to our local employers is huge, and far too many times we're having to turn them away. By growing the space, they are hoping to expand the classes they offer, possibly including underwater welding in the future. And tonight on the News at 6, hear from a Lincoln employer about the increasing need they are seeing for skilled welding in our state and our nation. Ariana Martinez, thank you very much for that story tonight. All right, let's get a check of your uh, first forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron in for John tonight. And uh, how are things going on this Friday evening? Well, Rob, when I drove into work today, I mean, there was a ton of sunshine, but things clouded up really quickly. We've got plenty of warm air and you get these little warm bubbles, which will rise slowly, form these fair weather cumulus clouds. And there's quite a bit of them looking live over our groundworks camera facing off towards the east. However, if you switch the view off towards the southwest, this is a live view over Honda of Lincoln, you see a little bit more sunshine off towards the southwest uh, with less coverage of those fair weather cumulus clouds. Now, in some cases, mainly off towards the north of Lincoln, we've been able to see a couple of showers develop uh, in Butler going in towards Saunders County. And at some points, we've been able to see a, a lone shower crop up in northern Lancaster County. But the vast majority of us are dry this evening if you are in Lincoln and points to the south. And I suspect that most of those showers will remain off towards the north as the evening wears on. You can see some showers approaching Columbus and North Fork at this time as well. But again, in Lincoln right now, we are dry. Here's our temperature stand at the moment. 81 degrees in the capital city, 83 in Beatrice, 80 in Wahoo, 79 in
between Columbus, 84, Grand Island, 81, the current air temperature in Hastings. And part of the reason why these showers are having a hard time getting going is the air is dry. We do not have humid air at the surface. So for the rest of this evening, we'll have some clouds around 79 degrees by 8 o'clock, 73 degrees by 10 o'clock. We've got rain chances going into your Saturday. We'll let you know when coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Malcolm. While summer uh, may not officially be here uh, for another few weeks, it's already time to start thinking about staying cool. There are many people in Lincoln who can't afford air conditioning and need fans to stay cool. The Salvation Army, along with the West Lake Ace Hardware Stores in Lincoln, are teaming up for their 10th annual fan drive. Every year, Ace Hardware asks customers to consider rounding up their purchases to donate. In the last decade, Ace Hardware raised more than $26,000, and each year they give away hundreds of fans. You know, this is one of my most favorite parts of my job is is raising funds for the community and supporting the community. I think it's more important now than ever with the rise of costs everywhere between fuel costs, heating and cooling costs, uh, equipment costs. This year it's probably more important than it's ever been. The drive goes through June 19th and you can go to any Ace Hardware store to donate money or round up your purchase at the store. You can also donate online at westlakehardware.com. Several organizations in Lincoln have collaborated for the Cornhole for Cancer event happening this evening. The Cornhole Tournament will also be featuring Lincoln's best selection of classy cars. Channel 8's Danielle Kaiser gives us a look at the event that's happening now. We're going to have um, a cornhole tournament. We're going to have classic cars to see. We're going to have great grilled burgers to enjoy and, and lots of drinks. And we have a fun drawing, you know, throughout the rest of the night so people can win some great prizes. Cancer Partners of Nebraska and Lincoln Firefighters Association partner with Heartland Cancer Foundation to create an event giving in ways cancer patients may never forget. More on the mental side, uh, if we can help them, if they're worried about losing their hair uh, and we can help them have one less thing to stress about, uh, it's it's really an easy decision. And so the 21 and up event will feature cars, cornhole and more just right off of 68th Street. All proceeds from the event will go towards helping cancer patients right here in Lincoln. Jim McNeil of Rebels Auto Club says that supporting charities makes the difference for people who need it most. Well, the thing about the charities that people don't realize that if we don't support our charities and keep our charities going, the folks that need it the most, they don't have it. And again, the event is going on right now at the Cancer Partners of Nebraska with food, drinks, and much more. Coming up, the NBA Finals are underway with Game 1 taking place last night. We're going to have all the details plus your full forecast coming up after the break. When you see someone sipping on a drink,
Now to the NBA Finals. The Boston Celtics stunning the Golden State Warriors in Game 1, coming from behind. And then dominating the final minutes to jump out to the lead in the series. ABC's Will Reeve has the highlights. The Celtics take Game 1. This morning, the Boston Celtics are three wins away from a record 18th NBA title. Boston storming back from a double-digit fourth quarter deficit. Oh, Williams caught a body underneath, and here come Boston. To stun the Golden State Warriors at home in the first ever finals game at Chase Center. A surprise outcome, and right from tip-off, it seemed the heavily favored Warriors were taking control. Behind the screen, Steph Curry locked in. Superstar Steph Curry exploding for 21 points in the first quarter sinking six threes, the most ever in one finals quarter. The home crowd in a frenzy as the Warriors, back in the finals for the first time since 2019, took a 12-point lead into the fourth quarter. Pulls the three, Both teams draining shots from distance, making a finals record 40 combined three-pointers. But even with that history made, the Warriors still faltered as the Celtics finished off the comeback. Back to Horford for the lead. Boston up by three. Veteran Al Horford showing out in his first finals game of his 15-year career. Young star Jalen Brown catching fire late. Brown from downtown. And put a dejected Warriors team on their back foot. And my guys found me tonight and I knocked them down. Warriors fans may have gone home quiet last night, but they were really loud all night, especially for Klay Thompson making his return after missing two seasons with two different injuries. But it's the Celtics who are closer to going home with this hardware, the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Will Reeve, ABC News, San Francisco. And game two of the NBA Finals is this Sunday at 7 p.m. right here on KLKN. No, your Storm Alert Team forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron. Well, we were able to turn just a little bit warmer to close out the work week. Lincoln made it up into the middle 80s this afternoon, but at this hour we are sitting at 81 degrees and everybody is in the 80s right now. Oh, we're at 84 degrees in Grand Island, 81 in Hastings, 83 degrees in Aurora, a 79 in Columbus. They're the one exception uh, because they've got some showers moving on by. As we talked about in first weather, most of the showers are just off to the north of the capital city. We've got fair weather cumulus clouds elsewhere, though. Here's a live look over our Allo communications camera. We see a mix of sun and clouds in the capital city, but as I mentioned, there's more cloudiness off towards the north along with some of these showers. The bulk of them are in northeast Nebraska, but we are watching some moving out of southeast Butler County and into Saunders County. At one point earlier this afternoon, there was one very tiny shower that tried to fire in northwest Lancaster County, but that has since fizzled out. Most of this is just to the north of Lancaster and Seward County at this point in time. Everybody, I'd say I-80 points south. Uh, we're dry at this point and will likely remain so for the rest of this evening. Stormcast picking it up at six o'clock. See these green blips. Yeah, that's it trying to show those isolated showers, but uh, they start to end as we go throughout the evening hours. But tonight our attention is going to turn off towards the west as we're going to be watching some shower and thunderstorm activity in the western parts of the state, and it's going to move eastward in the overnight hours. But by this point, it'll be 10 o'clock and we've lost the daytime heating effect. So you see these thunderstorms just kind of fizzle out. Uh, there'll still be some showers around, so the Tri-Cities could see some uh, showers early Saturday morning. This is 4 o'clock, so I'd say anywhere from 2 to 4 o'clock. We could see some of these scattered showers in the Tri-Cities. Uh, they'll continue to move eastward into early Saturday morning, and I think from about 5 or 6 a.m. through about lunchtime, we may have to dodge some of these showers in the capital city. So for tonight, 54 degrees in Lincoln, clouds increasing, morning showers do become possible. Now we'll pick up Stormcast at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Here are those scattered showers and we have to keep them in the forecast through about lunchtime. This likely will not be full fledged thunderstorm activity. You might hear a rumble of thunder or two, but um, for the most part, these should just be some showers. And in fact, they'll move out of here for the afternoon hours. I think we'll start to dry out Saturday afternoon and we may see a little bit of sunshine as well. But then we're watching a second round of activity in the evening, watching some thunderstorm activity developing, uh, I'd say after six o'clock in the central part of the state. And while they're in the central part of the state, maybe out towards Greeley, Ord, or Broken Bow, uh, just north of the Tri-Cities, we may see an isolated spin up out of these. But I think uh, tomorrow, honestly, the bigger threat would be uh, large hail and damaging straight line winds with these thunderstorms in the early evening hours. And as they push off towards the south, we'll have to watch the severe weather potential. Not a fantastic severe weather chance, but it's there nevertheless. We'll keep an eye 
eye on it. Uh, by 11 o'clock, we could be watching these thunderstorms approaching uh, the Lincoln area, but at this point it is 11 o'clock. These storms will likely be weakening, so the severe weather threat does look to be a little bit lower for Lincoln, but tomorrow evening we could see some shower activity. So bottom line for your Saturday, 80 degrees, morning showers, ending probably around lunchtime, dry for much of the afternoon, and then we could see some evening thunderstorms. More likely in Lincoln going to be in the later evening hours, closer towards midnight. Winds out of the south, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's a look at our 10 day forecast, and there's a lot to unpack on our 10 day outlook. We've got a lot of rain chances over the next week, so uh, it might be a little overwhelming, but just focus on the next couple of days. That's what we have greatest confidence in those first few days on our 10 day outlook. View everything as opportunities for rainfall as opposed to guarantees for rainfall. Picking up Sunday, uh, 79 degrees, maybe some scattered thunderstorms, maybe lasting into Monday morning, and then another wave of rain moving by on Tuesday. You'll notice temperatures remain cool into next week, all 70s next week. I think that's a great way to phrase it, Malcolm. Opportunities, mm -hmm. not guarantees for that rain. So just watch out, maybe mm -hmm. throw an umbrella in the car just in case if you have mm -hmm. outdoor plans. But other than that, it looks like it'll be a mostly nice weekend. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to hammer it over the last couple of days. In their very nature, scattered showers are hit or miss. So Absolutely. All right, thank you very much, Malcolm. Uh, not a great end to the work week on Wall Street. The Dow falling 349 points. NASDAQ is also down 304. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, as Ubaldi says... Uh, here you go. There's a restaurant in Arizona where you're supposed to lick the walls. Yes, he said lick. The <laughs> walls made of Himalayan rock salt were brought in by the chef for the ambiance. 
but they're also for the customers to lick to help the tequila go down. Himalayan rock salt is said to have natural sanitary properties, but restaurant staff regularly do wipe them down. Thank, thank goodness. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good thing um, these walls have been around for 17 years and yeah, have seen a lot of tongues. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> I wonder if these walls originate in France. And that's where you get the term French kissing. Oh, true, all true. All that tongue action and all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, let's get you a final check of weather. Um, some scattered light rain possible just to the north of Lincoln, but we'll keep the cloud cover around for the time being as a result. Likely dry in Lincoln by 6 o'clock, uh, 81 degrees into the 70s by 8, keeping clouds into the overnight hours. Clouds will increase overnight tonight with some scattered morning rain possible on Saturday. All right, thank you so much, Malcolm, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> Have a great Friday night, and uh, we'll see you at 6. <laughs> With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. At Comfort Made Mattress Factory, we build each mattress specifically for you, right here in our locally owned store. We can even make his side different than hers, backed by our lifetime comfort guarantee. Closed